what's up guys, it's LEGO Hobo 910 here with another LEGO video. And in this video I'm reviewing set number 75172 Y Wing Starfighter. Think this is a great set and let's get right into the review. So first up we have this little kind of ground crew ammo loader crane thing. And I like it when they put these things in Starfighter sets, even though you normally don't see them on the box, because the box is normally Starfighter flying along through space where you would expect to see it. But I like that they include these because it gives the set more to do than just fly around. Because you can also load it and get the pilot in and everything. So I like when they do this. And the bottom of this is covered in slider plates so it slides around easily. And there's two parts here just connected by a ball joint. There's this little ammo compartment part and the crane part here. This bends there, there, there. And then this is on a ball joint though it's really limited. And you use this to pick up part of this, which I will show you later. But overall, this is pretty good. I like the crane. Let's just take out Admiral Radis here. And that's a very commonly used printed piece there in Star Wars sets, used all over. There's a little silver wrench piece there for doing maintenance. I like the shape of this. And then there's those stickers on the side there. Has a little black chair. I think that's pretty good. This other part here, this is on a little clip. You can take that off. Here's the rack for the ammo. And it has those symbols in some language. I'm not sure which is the right way up. How are supposed to read them this way? Or this way? And I don't know what language it is. If you know what language it is, or which way it's supposed to be, please tell me. And if you know what it means, please tell me, because I'd like to know. It's probably some funny little Easter egg, but... Yeah, and then this is just very simple. Has a few grill plates. And then this pops off, and this has two extra bombs, which I'll show you more about that later. And two extra spring-loaded shooters. And this can just be hooked on there through the top. And then you can use that to load your ship. Speaking of your ship, this is the Y-Wing. And this is actually one of my favorite original trilogy ships. I just really like the Y-Wing, especially since it's a bomber, and I just like bombers. Yeah, this is a pretty cool ship. And it's a massive improvement over the previous y when They made, like... Three or four others. I know they made at least three. They made just the original Y Wing set, the Gold Leader's Y Wing, and then one that's not just a Y Wing, it's uh, Darth Vader's TIE Advanced and Y Wing. And, it's, and this is a huge improvement over the rest. It looks a lot better. Though I do prefer the cabin on one of them, I think it looks a little bit better from the outside. But I'm going to be starting at the front, moving to the back. Starting at the front here, we have these little nose cannons. And I like the shaping on the side here. It's very smooth. Though I feel like there's way too many studs exposed on the top there. Though I do like the printing on the cockpit. Yes, that is all printing. Woo! Celebration. And I like that they managed to mix in a decent amount of yellow. Plus, they include these little flaps here at the back of the cockpit to give it more shape. And if you have the gun facing forward, you can't open the cockpit, but this just swivels around. It's a two-barreled gun. So if you face it another way, you can open up the cockpit. And also, I like that they carried over some of the sand blue to the back there. And your pilot just fits in there. And this is rare, the pilot actually being connected with studs and not just a leg bracket. Then he has that little console piece with kind of a little targeting computer there. And that just closes up there. Also, they carried over the kind of black uh, transparent color over there. And then also something that you probably saw when I turned it to the bottom are these little missiles here, which you can kind of see from the top. It's easiest to see from the side, and you just push on those. I wish there was some hidden activation mechanism, though. And sometimes when you're trying to transport this, you will, like, kind of the natural way to carry it when transporting it is by kind of holding it here. So sometimes you'll bump these and end up shooting them and then losing them. I actually lost one already. And had to dig one out of my spare parts. But and then moving back, we have kind of the neck of the Y wing. And if you don't know why it's called a Y wing, it's because it's a Y. So moving over to kind of the neck of the Y is what I'm gonna call it. They included some brown antennas, and I like the fact that they included some brown. That's something that I've seen a few people annoyed over, but I like it. It gives it more color and texture, makes it look better, not just plain. And then you can fit your astromech in there. They just sit in there sideways, and then their heads just turn sideways, so you can turn that around the proper way. 
and they just barely fit in there. There's quite a few Technic pieces exposed in there, but you're not really going to be looking in there. He's taken up by the astromech. A few little clips and such to give it more shape. If you move back, there's a little gray ingot there, giving it more shape. And also there's some droid bodies there, which go over these chi slopes. And if we look down here, there's these little textured bricks and clips and tiles and all sorts of stuff to give it shape and texture. There's clips, there's some little tiny brown bars here. Some little clips and all sorts of stuff, grill plates. It gives it a lot of texture. And you have this little spinny wheel back here, which does nothing though, it is kind of fun to flick. And then, you got some shaping there. The white bars though, I don't think those look good. I wish they would have done them in gray, but it's really not that noticeable. And then, you have the little gray bars back there. Some gears and little kind of nozzles there, which give it a lot of shaping, some studs. And then the front of these engines, they have this weird ball piece, which on one of the old Y-Wings I own, and if you want me to do a comparison video, I sure will. I don't think it's the most recent Y-Wing before this, but I do own another Y-Wing. And on the previous one, it looked more like half of a golf ball, but if you want me to do a comparison, let me know. And there's some sand blue and these long extenders here. And they also use some ice skate pieces there, like the little kind of clear pink magenta piece there, that's where the thruster would be, and then there's a hole here where there is supposed to be a hole, and I can kind of fit my pinky finger through there, and that's kind of where the flames and all the expulsion from the engine goes out, though I'm pretty sure, yeah, on previous Y-Wings, there wasn't a hole there, so that's a bit of a mistake, and then there's some shaping with some cheese slopes, looks really nice, and if we look on the bottom here, there's also this landing gear which can be adjusted. Two there and then one on the front. You just move that up and down. These go side to side. And now the most important feature of the Y-Wing. The fact that it bombs. If you just turn this little nozzle here, it'll drop these bombs out of the bottom. And in order to put them in, you just drop them in the top there. Turn until you get a new slot. Drop them in. And then, this is a very geniusly done here. As you can see, it uses these, like, kind of X black tech pieces. I'm going to try to get some more light in there. And you just drop those in, and then these little 2 by 2s with the weird slider things, they make the bomb drop head first. Because if they didn't have those, it would just fall out. But since they are there, it kind of makes those get caught up and makes it drop head first. If you watch this bomb drop, you'll see that it drops kind of head first. Just a little bit. You probably won't be able to see that, but if you slow it down, you'll see that it kind of goes like that. And there's four slots there for the four bombs in the set. There's two included with the ammo rack, but you kind of can get them in. Getting more than two in is requires a lot of finagling you kind of have to scroll them through and then hold one in at the bottom, put one in at the top, turn them back, put one in at the bottom, and then you have to turn it to a certain angle so that way you don't have bombs falling out. So it requires quite a bit of finagling in order to fit all four in, but you can, and then you can go through do a bombing run, which is really fun if you have a bunch of Imperial minifigs, which you can get in the Imperial Trooper Battle Pack. And... You can just go through and bomb all of them, or if you get your uh, assault hover tank or your ATST or just a bunch of Imperial troops, it's really fun to just swoop over and just drop a bunch of bombs and then shoot at them. That's like that's one of the main reasons I really love this set. It's because it's just so fun to swoop over and just drop these bombs, and I just really like it. Just overall the features and everything. But yeah, now let's get into the minifigs. First up, we have Moroth, and no, he is not a snowy Wookiee, he is a Gagorian, and he is excellent, he's amazing, I love him. He was seen very briefly in Rogue One, he was part of Sagrera's rebel group, and this is based on the main rebel group, so it kind of doesn't make sense, but I'm glad we got him. Speaking of, if, Lego, if you're listening, make a Sagrera's fortress set, okay, and... 
he has a lot of printing, and this is actually double molded here. I'll show you better later. And he has some brown around the eyes. On the leg print, he has kind of that knee belt. Though you have to lean him back really far in order for the printing on the hip piece to line up. That might be a misprint on my part. Like, mine might just be misprinted. You would think they would print it up a little higher if they were going to print it higher or lower. Because with all this weight on his back, he has to lean forward in order to stand up straight. But if you want him standing straight up, then his belt looks like that. So, mm, they kind of screwed up there. They gave him this... They modified this kind of gun-looking piece here, which I think of as kind of a Glock. By putting that on there, and it makes it look like kind of the minigun thing he has. And then that clips to his backpack. Speaking of his backpack... This is quite a massive build for the back of him, and I'm pretty sure this is like a backpack and a power pack for the gun. And there's this little clip hinge piece here, which just goes up like that. This is a really complex back piece here, and then it has this, which you can turn in and out, though it looks best like that, and that's what it's meant to be. And that looks really cool, and it's just simply attached to a neck bracket here. And I'm going to take off that neck bracket so that way you can see a bit more of some stuff that I want to show you. It's just one of these normal clear brackets which then this entire backpack assembly attaches to, so pretty cool. And as you can see, they also left a little slit there. Like with Wookiees, they let the mold here go down the back. So I was thinking that's what they were going to do until I realized they had the backpack. But they left off the back, and they also put a little slit there for the neck bracket to go through. And there's just a bunch of fur printing there. And if you take off this, there's just more fur printing. And if you look in there, you can see that, yes, this is a double mold. The mouthpiece and the chest piece there, those aren't actually part of the white plastic. Those are attached to this gray bit there, which is just glued in. And there's no head under this. This is just a specially molded headpiece, which goes over the top. Yeah, I'm glad that they did a double mold and they didn't just print it over. I think that was a really smart choice and makes the minifig look a lot better. It's a trap! No, it's not. This is an Admiral Akbar. This is a different Mon Calamari Admiral. This is Admiral Radis from Rogue One. You can see him in Rogue One. He's the one who sends in the Hammerhead Corvette and is in charge of the assault on Scare for, like, the aerial battle. He just has this little pistol here. Like the Mon Calamari mold here. Use gray, dark, tan, tan. think that's multiple pieces of plastic. It might be a print, though. Actually, now that I'm thinking about that, yeah, that's probably a print. Has those little eyes there. And has kind of this weird bib overall piece thingamajig that he wears in the movie. With the little silver badge there, there's some belt detailing and pockets, there's a little bit of detailing on the legs there, with some kind of wrinkles and pockets. Move around to the back, the weird bib thingamajig carries over down the back. It's a pretty good minifig, and I think he will really help if you're trying to recreate scenes from Rogue One, and also he's just kind of an important character in Rogue One, even though you really don't learn who he is. He's kind of just important in the background, and he's just a cool minifig. So now we just have this nameless rebel astromech. He doesn't have any number like R7D5325T7CPRQWSKSSOS53555943215599. Two two C, yeah, he doesn't have any name like that. He's he's just plain Rebel Astromech, and I like that they printed the head in. They didn't just do a solid color; they did a transparent black tan thingamajig. I like that, and then it has this orange printing on it, which I think is really good because I I don't think I've ever seen a Lego Astromech with orange on it, so I like that. The front printing is just generic Astromech printing in silver and black then silver legs, and once again, I'm hoping they add the third leg to Astromex. I don't know why they don't put that on LEGO Astromex. Please just add it, LEGO. Please, please, we're begging you. But yeah, this is a good Astromex, just 
doesn't have any special name or anything. I would say what I already said, except I didn't write it down, and I don't even know what I said. I was just kind of ranting random letters and numbers and stuff. So, yeah, it's a good astromech, but once again, wish they would add that third leg that astromechs have. So, now we have this uh, Y-Wing pilot, they call it, even though in the U-Wing, it's in that set, and it's called the U-Wing pilot. It's just this pilot, and it's exactly the same. It has this little blaster, it's in dark blue, and with pilots, this is quite common when they print the white on, the color underneath shows through, so it's kind of a bluey white. I mean, it's probably a very simple problem to fix, just print some black under it. Then it has the respirator box, there's a bunch of tubes and straps and stuff. He's just exactly the same as the U-Wing pilot, he's nothing special. The weird bib overall thing continues over, some straps, belts. This helmet here with checkerboard pattern, once again exactly the same as the one with the U-Wing. He has that face with the visor and the chin strap and smile. And he has the scare danger face, it's really nothing special, he's just exactly the same as the one in the U-Wing, he's just kind of a generic rebel pilot. I wish they would have done something to him to make him different. Like put on a different helmet, because none of the rebels have the same helmet, just give him a different helmet, and then he will be a completely different uh, guy, and it would be a lot better than just reusing the exact same guy, I mean, just, I don't care if it's not a new print on the helmet, just put some other helmet on, like, if it's a helmet for just any old rebel pilot, it's not based off a certain guy, if it's based off a certain pilot, don't put it on here, if this isn't meant to be that pilot, but just Make some different print form so he's not exactly the same, but yeah, he's just the pilot. It's nothing really special with him. And now another non-special minifig is just the generic stormtroopers, though it's good to get these guys because, I mean, if you want to build an army, you want stormtroopers. So it's good to get these guys, but he's nothing special. I'm glad they included him so that way you have somebody to fight in the set or to go on the bombing run with. He has the leg printing there, the chest printing, it's kind of generic stormtrooper, the back printing, the helmet with all its printing, angry clone, it's kind of a medium sized blaster. He's nothing special, he's just a generic stormtrooper. Once again, good to get more of these guys. Overall, I really like this set. I think the Y-Wing is a great ship. The minifigs are pretty good. Though two of them are just uh, just generic, but the other three that aren't common and just unspecial, these three, the exclusive ones, they are really cool and I like them. The set's really good. I especially like the bombing feature. It's an improvement over some of the other older y bombing features. Overall, I really like this set. It's just really fun. But yeah, that's all, and peace.